Our next speaker is Dr. Robert Schneider. It's a real honor to have him because, as you know, he's really done so much to bring real mainstream support to our community. I think $25 million in NIH grants. These breakthrough heart um, studies, especially supporting stress and heart health with Afro-American Afro populations. And now his latest work, which I'm very excited about, is the work of epigenetics, which is how we can actually have control over our own DNA, which is very exciting, cutting edge work. Would you please give a very warm welcome to Dr. Robert Schneider. Good afternoon. The cutting edge of modern medicine is coming to the place where mind meets body, where mind meets DNA, where we have control over DNA, where we can control our, our genes from the inside out. And this, this development of modern medicine very much parallels the science of meditation and its description and technologies for developing the mind-body connection. Let me explain, or let Time Magazine explain. According to the latest research in modern medical science, as reported by Time, your DNA is not your destiny. This was the old paradigm, that it was fixed, your genetic code. But now, new scientific discoveries show that your choices in lifestyle, behavior, what you think, how you use and develop your consciousness, can change your genes. This slide shows the paradigm of modern medical science on the left-hand side and the paradigm of ancient science of meditation on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we see the representation of physiology from the surface level of organs, systems, tissues, cells, proteins, and on the finest level of human physiology, according to the modern perspective, is one molecule the DNA molecule which contains all of the intelligence which governs your whole physiology throughout your whole lifespan and also governs much of your behavior and even personality. And according to Dr. John Hagelin and leading quantum physicists, the DNA is governed by the laws of chemistry, the laws of physics, and then ultimately the most subtle level, the least excited state of physiology is the unified field of all the laws of nature. Now, modern medicine has been progressively going through this pathway from the surface to the subtle over the past several decades. Surgery works on the more uh, physical level, the mechanical level, changing your body parts, sewing them up, and that's important uh, at, in some cases. Pharmacologic medicine works on the cellular level, receptors, molecules, changing those cellular components. Molecular medicine works at an even deeper level, attempting to uh, manipulate on the protein level. Modern genomic medicine attempts to understand the code contained within the DNA, the information that governs your, your life and lifespan, and attempts to engineer on that level to change one's DNA to reverse disease and promote ideal health. And quantum medicine works on the most fundamental levels of the quantum mechanical laws of nature. Now let's look at the science of meditation. And we'll use the example of transcendental meditation in this case. In this practice of meditation, individuals start at an active level of thinking, experience more quiet, more refined levels of thinking, and according to mind-body medicine, each of these states of excitation of mind or consciousness corresponds to a state of excitation of physiology until when a person transcends, they're on this common ground, this least excited state of mind and body. And if we can enliven each of these levels, and if this is really true, then our mind, and if, if our mind and bodies are connected, and when we transcend and experience orderliness and create orderliness and settledness on that deepest level, we should create orderliness and coherence in each of these states of physiology. From this paradigm, we should be able to change our DNA if this connection is true and if these technologies are effective. Let's look at the evidence. 
This is the paradigm of modern medicine. We'll start with the basics and then we'll work forward. They actually call it the central dogma of modern molecular biology. It's not religious, <laughs> it's scientific. So the central dogma of modern uh, molecular medicine is that DNA contains all the information uh, in your physiology and that information in the DNA is transcribed to RNA. In this RNA are little molecules that leave the cell nucleus and go out to the outer portions of the cell and carry that information to the uh, parts of the cell called ribosomes, and that creates proteins. And then these proteins go out to the rest of the body, and they create the building blocks of human physiology. So DNA to RNA to proteins is the central thesis or central dogma of modern genomic medicine. Here is a picture of your DNA, actually your DNA. And DNA is a double helix. It's wound around itself, and it's also wound around some proteins in the middle. So this protein DNA complex is called a chromosome. And then the portions of the DNA, which have information for different parts of the body, is called a gene. And these are your genes that code for the different parts of your body and physiological behavior. Now, that's the old paradigm, and here comes the new paradigm. It's recently been discovered in just the last several years that there are control mechanisms on this DNA. This protein uh, in the center called histone protein, and then this little molecule called a methyl uh, molecule on the outside of the DNA can regulate the DNA, can open up the DNA, so when that part of the DNA opens up from the spiral, from the helix, that part of the DNA expresses itself into RNA and proteins in the rest of the body. Or these regulatory proteins can close up the DNA, cause it to coil back on itself, so it will not express that information. So the information is there, but it can either open up and express itself or close down and not express itself. So this is the new science of epigenetics. That means the advanced stage of genetics showing these regulatory mechanisms. Now what triggers these regulatory mechanisms? It's been found that our, the process of development, our in utero development, the amount of love that we experience in our early lives and later lives, the, uh, the drugs in our environment, the chemicals in our environment, our food, our diet, even the aging process, our behavior, our thoughts. All of these have chemical effects that cause these regulatory proteins, these epigenetic factors to change, to open up the DNA or close down the DNA. So these are ways that the DNA expression can be controlled after birth in our daily life, through our daily experience and choices. And it's been found that many diseases are caused by, or uh, help to be caused by, these epigenetic mechanisms. Heart disease, hypertension, cancer, and, and the chronic disorders of aging have all been related to these epigenetic mechanisms that, again, are affected by our lifestyle. This is a famous study done in California and published in a major medical journal where subjects were uh, exposed or taught to change, to adopt radical changes in their lifestyle, uh, radical and intensive changes in their diet and exercise. And then here are a list of some of the genes that were shown to have been changed by these changes in lifestyle. Some genes were opened up or upregulated, and other genes were downregulated or closed down. This was just about the first time that it was shown that that our behavior can um, affect these epigenetic mechanisms and change our gene or DNA expression. This is an electron micrograph of your genes. The, that DNA molecule that I showed you earlier, that long strand of DNA wrapped around proteins, uh, form a chromosome, and these are pictures of those chromosomes. 
And at the ends of those chromosomes are highlighted a particular part, which is very important for today's discussion. Those ends of the DNA are called telomeres. They're like the ends of your shoelace, which form a cap on the DNA and protect those ends from getting frayed. And they protect the whole DNA molecule from destruction and disrepair. And it's been found that these telomeres are so important to maintain health and integrity of the DNA and the uh, health and integrity of your whole body. However, these telomeres degrade with age. They actually get shorter. This graph shows the change in the telomere length from birth when they're at full length to 35 to your 65. So normally these telomeres decline, get shorter. That gives less protection to your DNA. And then the DNA in turn uh, gets uh, into disrepair and then malfunctions. And then you have the chronic diseases and disorders associated with aging due to essentially falling apart of the function of your DNA. Now there's one more very important molecule I want to point out. There's an enzyme that takes care of the telomere, and the telomere takes care of the DNA. The enzyme that takes care of the telomere is called telomerase, and it's a very important enzyme that also has been related to aging and chronic disorders because it maintains the telomere, which maintains the DNA in its integrity. Our colleagues at Howard University and the Center for Natural Medicine and Prevention here at MUM, with funding from the National Institutes of Health, studied this molecule telomerase. And this was the subject of the PhD thesis of Shanti Lakshman here. And in this study, 45 individuals were randomly assigned to either practice meditation, in this case, transcendental meditation, or to learn extensive lifestyle changes. All these subjects had high blood pressure, so this was an attempt to treat their high blood pressure without drugs. And then we measured their gene expression for telomerase before and after 16 weeks. So we had two active groups, and on the right-hand side, we see the change in the lifestyle modification group. They had increases in their telomerase gene expression, and this replicated what was already found in the literature that telomerase can be affected by intensive lifestyle changes. But here's the news. The left-hand side of the chart shows people who were meditating. They were resting for 20 minutes twice a day. They weren't particularly out there jogging. They didn't make major changes in their diet or lifestyle. They are experiencing this state of least excitation of consciousness for 20 minutes twice a day. And after 16 weeks, they had major changes in their telomerase gene expression. So they used their minds over their DNA to increase their telomerase. Thank you. There are two forms of telomerase. Uh, the first one was H-TERT, it's called technically. This is HTR, it's the second uh, form of the molecule. Both of them change in both groups. So we confirmed uh, those changes. Uh, this data are uh, in review for publication in a major medical journal, and it shows this unique effect of changing your genes uh, through your consciousness. We think that this change in the DNA has a lot to do with heart disease. Everyone thinks that. DNA uh, does, and telomerase, it's been known, relates to heart disease. We also conducted a large study with National Institutes of Health funding in heart disease patients, practicing meditation compared to controls. It took 10 years and about $5 million to conduct this study, and what it showed was that people who meditated and who had heart disease had significantly lower levels of death, heart attack, and stroke after an average of five years of meditating compared to controls. This was published in a major American Heart Association journal. The Wall Street Journal just did a story on this study uh, a couple of days ago uh, this week, and their headline read, Doctor's Orders, 20 Minutes of Meditation, Twice a Day. Here's the actual data. 
Thank you. The left-hand bar shows the event rate, the rates of death, heart attack, and stroke in the, in the control group, the education group. The bar on your right shows the change in the transcendental meditation group. As you can see, there was about a 50% reduction in those events. And again, this is a relationship between the subtle levels of physiology and the gross levels of physiology. Consciousness correlating with changes in the DNA, correlating with changes in the organ systems and cardiovascular health and longevity. So, in summary, the old paradigm was the primacy of DNA. You had the DNA, it goes to RNA, it goes to proteins. There's those regulatory proteins, but they're fixed. Here's the new paradigm. According to my friend Bruce Lipton, who goes around the world talking about this concept of epigenetics, the primacy of environment. Here, our environment, our behavior, our consciousness, can affect those regulatory proteins, those epigenetic mechanisms, and they in turn cause the DNA to express or not express, changes the RNA, changes the protein. Time Magazine has proclaimed that we all have the God gene. That means we all have the potential to unlock that full intelligence within us, but it's our choices, our choices in lifestyle, our choices in technology that can change our DNA and create more ideal health and longevity. This is the conscious future. Really good. That was a great talk. Great talk. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking, you know, Bruce Lipton, he's well known for this whole thing on the biolo biology of belief. And the way I understand his body of work is that your thoughts and the things you think actually affect your DNA structure. But what you're talking about seems to be on a much more fundamental level, this level of transcending. Could you characterize these two bodies of work? Right. Uh, it is correct that scientific research shows that stress, that psychological stress, can cause decreases in telomerase and changes in telomere length. So the negative side of thoughts has been very well shown, but the technologies on the positive side of thoughts have not been well shown. The most powerful technology out there is this transcending meditation for working at the deepest level of thought and the most powerful level. So when you look at the positive side, uh, this is the most effective method for these holistic changes in mind-body health. Thank you very, very much for joining us here today. This is really fantastic. Right,